All right. All right. So we're recording. Um, yay. Yay. Wow. There was no countdown. There was no 15 well, seconds of silence. No. No. Nope. We're, we're really off the cuff this week. So. Um, what? Yeah, I know. Um, we're, we're going. You know, I think I was going to do a big intro. We're going in raw. Well, okay. Well, who is the one who's wanting a big intro? Identify yourself, sir. Are we supposed to sing? Um, yes. Where's my background music? Dun, 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 Happy dun. holidays, everybody. I'm putting on my radio voice. Oh, my. That's lovely. <laughs> so that's the dulcet tones of Bill Gardner. <laughs> He's high on he's high on uh, wacky pills since his knee Life. reconstruction. The rest of us is just normally like this. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you've been on his show enough; you should know. So, <laughs> anyway, all right. So the other the other uh, half, of course, is Ms. Berlin, and hey, hey. Uh, the last but not least, the uh, the the reason we're all here tonight. Not really, but I just wanted to make him feel special. <laughs> That's right. Jerry that, Bell. That's Jerry. Yay. Yeah. From Defensive Yay. Security. Yay. We wanted him to feel special because his uh, partner in crime, Mr. Andrew Callett, is uh, out doing something for, you know, Christmas. <laughs> Whatever. Fun. Yeah. It's called having a life. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That I don't know. Is? All those other people that had excuses of family and things yeah. to do for the holidays. I don't know what, I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. I got kids. Yeah, Whatever. Work. Mm. anyway my kids are where they're supposed to be watching tv while i'm working there you go <laughs> tv babysitter <laughs> my, that's the way mine is except she's all up on the the youtubes now so and the, and well, the yeah. netflix one's on playstation the other two are on youtube oh yeah she found uh voltron oh my goodness voltron oh no. yes it's all about clants uh, she ships them some clants i don't know what that means <clears throat> So they watch a lot of Minecraft. Yep, my daughter did that like too. Other people playing Minecraft. I just I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, watching people do watching old things. Yeah. Well, it helps you as a player. Like I watch people play WoW. Oh yeah. Uh, World of Warcraft to see if I can get any tips. Usually not so much. Oh, kind of okay. like listening to people talk about infosec. I guess. <laughs> yeah, that really sucks. By the Maybe. way, for those uh, break sec people, um, you know, I always suggest that you listen to Defensive Security. Um, I actually like Jerry and Andy. I've known them for a few years now. Um, how, hey, and I always, I always suggest people listen to Reboot It because what's I'm, I, I'm, I told you to. Who does that podcast? <laughs> oh, right. Because Bill lets me sleep at his house sometimes. <laughs> Who does that oh. podcast? I forget. So she also showers in my shower. Wait, what? He is the best shower ever. Well, we don't we don't need to get on that topic though. No, uh, thanks, Amanda. Wowzers. Okay. Wowzers. When my tenure and review committee meeting comes up, if you could write me a letter, that'd be helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could <laughs> Best totally. shower. Best shower. <laughs> Here's the reason Bill needs tenure. He has the best shower ever. He's <laughs> Maybe we should do a list of best showers in InfoSec. Uh, well, my shower ain't too bad. <clears throat> we'll have to come and try all these out. But then again, most of those lists are just made up at lunch yep. over a bottle of champagne anyway. So Right. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of lists that are made up, what's with the top fifty women in InfoSec? Well, I was gonna just list list off the top fifty women in InfoSec over this last year. I've had it. So, so number one I picked, I'll just start at one, is me. Uh well, of wait, course. wait, wait. Who Actually, made it? you're the top Ten, aren't you? That's as far as I've made it. <laughs> first, first ten. Who, who made I, I this think. list? Is this uh, AmandaBerlin.com or what? <laughs> no, but I do. I do have a list on my on my blog that I can put in the in the show notes. Oh yeah. It's just it's just clickbait though. It oh, says okay. there should never be a list like this. No, you should. <laughs> you should have like five people and then have a big bunch of ads and click next. Like, you know, list. Yes. There you go. Like BuzzFeed. Yep. It's yep. the BuzzFeed list for InfoSec. That's right. That's right. The things about this list is that sometimes I'll actually get sucked into it and I'm like, who? Who? Yeah. I mean, I don't know everybody, but I mean, come on. I know quite a few people on this one that's on the capsule I know quite a few site. people, too. And it's not yeah. they, they might be perfectly talented and maybe the mm. best in their class this year. I, I don't know, but I don't know them. It's yeah. weird. I don't want to be on any lists. 
I keep I'm I a got, bunch of lists, uh, federal lists, but oh, no fly, not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> After the show, possibly. Yeah, working on it. <laughs> Just wait. <clears throat> so, so Jerry, um, how how's the podcast doing for you guys over there? How's defensive security going? Um, you know, I I, I will say it's been uh, it's been challenging to keep up a regular pace yeah just because of uh life is uh life is happening i i, I feel uh i you know my, my parents warned me about this <laughs> as i was getting older that life would just feel like it was getting uh, faster and faster and um that certainly is uh, is true so i you know I, I i took on a new job i just guess about two years ago and it, it just continues to get more and more busy and so mm. it's uh it becomes increasingly difficult to uh, to record and and actually find time because Andy's get gets uh, gets pretty busy lately too and finding uh, mutual time is increasingly challenging so yeah oh yeah you did a couple of shows when you were like over in Ireland or something that this year right <laughs> yeah I think I did one when I was in Hungary a couple when I was in Ireland and France and yeah that's pretty awesome I've been feel like I've been everywhere lately <laughs> that's awesome you got to uh, travel at least. So there's that. Yeah, there's that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mom asked me the other day if uh, uh, I still enjoy flying, you know, because she's like getting on a plane again for the first time in a while. And she's like, yeah, I always get like butterflies or whatever. When you're about to take off, I'm like, I'm asleep half of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> like I'll sit down in that seat and before takeoff I'm out. So <laughs> so I, no, I really don't care anymore. <laughs> do you have one of those like broken neck collars to keep your, you know, head from like I to- I have one of those. Okay. It's called a turtle or something. It's just like a Yeah, it's like a yeah, it just holds your head up. You know, God. I've said this before. It's not the flying that bothers me. It's the freaking airports. Uh, oh, yeah. I like mine. Well, it's just well, you've been to my airport, haven't you? No, you know, they only have the TSA line open from nine to nine fifteen. Uh, it's not. Wow. It's just a. I don't know. It's maybe it's not my airport, but just uh, I don't get a, a. I just don't get around very well. In airports are just big indoor shopping malls mm. for people who happen to be flying from place to place. So well, um, and being free, stuck man. in an airport just do drives me insane. But got a yeah. lot. Gotta you know what grinds my gears? Why don't you go out? I'm here to just bring the entire level, all of that, everything down to, you know, things that pisses Bill off. That could be the title of the podcast. Uh, we know it. it's airing your it. grievances. It's, you know, it's like chest of us. Don't even get me started. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I always, uh, you know, um, Jerry, your your podcast is always one of the the ones on the top of the list of podcasts that I listen to. So you're you're always one that I recommend to people, regardless of you know type or or or, or whatever, um, you know, or what what they're trying to do in infosec. And you know, it's just uh, one of the one of them staples that I like hearing. So don't uh, don't change, you know, even if it's well, thank you, know, you. I just like the name. Oh, yeah, God, it is a cool again. name, isn't it? Nope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd be a good name for a book someday. It would. Oh, huh. And I know mm. who could write the forward. <laughs> so, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody here except Bill has actually changed jobs this year, haven't they? Mandy, you've... I, uh, I didn't. Oh, you didn't? No, it, it's been two years for me, so I'm... I've oh, been, okay. Just... Uh, well, yeah, not yeah. unless there's not unless there's something I don't know about. No. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Year's not over yet, Bill. That's right. I, mean, I guess I I didn't fully change. We we had like a spinoff thing where we're still I, I'm still working for two companies, mm. but getting one paycheck. Oh, that's <laughs> so. oh. wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's fascinating. I yeah. I um I did the scary thing of retooling. I left a company of three and a half years and realized that becoming a, being a vulnerability manager for the rest of my life was not going to uh, further my career. So I'm now a project manager. So what are you doing now? Uh, I work, uh, I work uh, for a company here in Seattle. Amazon. No, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, a real company. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh, Starbucks. 
no, no, no. You're a barista. No. <laughs> it's a security company here. Yeah, call Leviathan there, Bill. You know that. I'm teasing you. That's yeah. great. Um, yeah, it was. it's scary retooling. You know, a lot of people... Yeah, you know, it's like it's almost like when I left the Navy, there was an institutionalization there. I was like, am I going to continue to be able to be technical and do my job? And yeah. and you know, you you move right. over to a new job and you you find parallels or you find things that hey, you know, I've actually been doing this for a while. It's not hard to do. You know, there's some bumps and stuff like you know, understanding you know the PM side of it, but it's it's not been too bad. It's so awesome. I, they're a good place to work at. So yeah, it's so. Good. Yep. Um, so, did anybody see that thing on Twitter this morning uh, it, about the the people getting kicked off of Slack? I mean, this wasn't just like personal, like free accounts. Some people were actually who work at their companies with uh, Slack are getting kicked off. Yep, it's crazy. So, like, they just couldn't access their own, like from the u.s like were they in the u.s when it happened uh it was gone well they had apparently so this guy got a letter he said in order to comply with export control and economic sanctions laws and regulations promulgated by the department of commerce and u.s department of treasury slack prohibits unauthorized use of its products and services in certain sanctioned countries including iran uh, cuba north korea syria and crimea the region of ukraine so apparently either these people have traveled there or were traveling there for business or what have you um and or you know they were on vacation and they left their work slack accounts on their on their phones or on their mobile devices and or on their computers and apparently geolocation updates that slack has done uh triggered the bans so they you know and they're well, having a hell of a time getting reinstated because some of these folks are like, oh, well, I use it for work. And Well, isn't that just like a sanction that they have to comply with anyways? Yeah, it's, I think you'll see more of this. Really? Yeah, it, it is. I think I, you'll see more of this. There's got to be other companies that are doing it too. You just don't hear it because not everybody uses them or... Yeah. Well, but, there's a lot of companies that are so pro-privacy that they might never actually follow through with it. But technically... Anything with strong encryption, anything uh, that would violate the export ban, um, mm-hmm. that includes signal. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things. My brain's not working very fast, but things like that will be an issue. Well, they banned WhatsApp in Brazil at one time, so you can use WhatsApp over there. So maybe that's uh, along the same lines. Um, how, how does uh, how do you how do you, uh, uh, Jerry? How does uh, you know, how does your company handle geo blocking? Do they have any kind of software that, you know, you have to worry about that kind of stuff? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think as with a lot of large companies, there's a, a kind of a, a, a mix of different strategies. I, I know one, one popular way that there's a couple of different companies that actually sell, um, you know, like a, it's almost like a blacklist, you know, so so you, they help you ferret out, you know, um, uh, countries or, or origins that are coming from uh, from embargoed countries mm-hmm. like you know Syria, North Korea, Iran. Um, what if you have business there, though? You well, can't. see, that's the thing. You that's shouldn't the, be doing business. Yeah, with you're, this you're not. You're not allowed. And actually, that I, I suspect that now I don't know all the facts behind this this um, this deal with Slack, but you know, you, you, as a U.S. based company, you're not permitted to do business with entities in one of those countries. And so I suspect, you know, I don't know if this is a new thing for them, or or you know, maybe they just kind of got on the program because they're reading the tea leaves here in the U.S. Mm. But you know, that that's really been an obligation for them all along. I would I would suspect. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the the interesting thing is, it's like you, you're not. Well, I mean, if you took your work laptop with you to, let's say, you know, Syria, for instance, that'd be probably the only place I'd ever be caught, you know, traveling to, if if at all. But even if you do not go to any of the things on that list. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. Highly, well, I highly advise you not uh, to. Yeah, no, you, none of those countries are great for women in general. <laughs> well, Cuba, heard, Cuba heard, would be the only exception. That would be for the rum and cigars, but Cuba, the rest Cuba's, of those companies, countries, forget it. Yeah, Cuba's a, I, I actually had the opportunity to go there, but we didn't go for a, a, a vacation. But, um, you know, yeah, I could definitely see that there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just weird. So, I mean, what other, 
I mean, are we gonna are we gonna see more of this uh, with regards to messaging systems, or could it be operating systems? Like you know, you open up your you know your work laptop, or you open up your personal laptop in you know Cuba, for instance, and all of a sudden you know it blue screens on you with a, a geolocation issue, or you know activate some kind of bricking mechanism in your you know computer or your phones. Could your phones be bricked because you're in a location like that? It's conceivable. Technically, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's technically doable. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think there's also the other side of this is: is do you really want to be taking electronic devices into countries such as China or Iran? Because well, you might come back with more software than you went there with. Well, that's that's the gift that keeps on giving them. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, you know, I, I would say probably China less so than, you know, like uh, some of the other places. But, but yeah, I mean, you always have to you you always have to be careful. And I suspect that the the pro, you know the, the level of concern is going to be based on who you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go to those countries anyways with technology, chances are you're going to be blocked from using half of the internet anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, There's my, so many places that geoblock based on countries alone that I feel like you would have to use a VPN to get to the rest of the internet. Yeah, yeah. and it, you know, it, one an interesting thing, like in China, you, it, um, some some of those types of things are are actually illegal, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, cer- trying to circumvent the you know the, the controls they put in place. Now, you know, whether or not you we agree that they are ethical and and you know humanitarian, that's a different. It's a right. different issue, right? But you know, you're, if you're there and you're 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 actively violating their laws, it's not a not the best. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. Let's just say that yeah. you don't want to find yourself in a foreign prison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I last time I was there, I you know, there were people following you, right? That, and wow, you, you have minders. So I like. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't want to be in a Chinese prison. That's all I'm saying. Nope. <laughs> the quote of the day. I, don't I mean, I would, I would rather prison. not go to any prison. Oh. <laughs> that should be the title of the show. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, okay. So, let's go back. Um, you know, since this is the year-end review kind of thing, I don't want to do pr- – Bill, I don't want to do predictions. I don't like predictions. But Oh, come on. It's the easy thing breaches. that I can do. There will be big breaches. That's exactly. There will be small breaches. There will be bigger than there'll be ever. Credit card breaches. There will be some Bitcoin um, uh, Bitcoin wallets that, that were are hacked. Uh-huh. I predict a hotel will get hacked. Some O days. Let's see. So there'll be some zero days. Probably yeah. a named vulnerability. Ooh, Ooh. my goodness. Yep. 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 There, there we go. There will be Twitter well, drama. The, oh yes. The cybersecurity <laughs> skills gap will not be fixed. Yes. I would yes. argue we don't have a skills gap. We have a hiring problem. Yeah. Discuss. Uh, well, uh, being this is something I'm actually my PhD work is on. So. Let's talk offline sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I, I look forward to that. Maybe we could uh, discuss that in the new year. So, oh, um, yeah. <clears throat> so what were some of the big stories that everybody uh, can remember about 2018? You know, things that happened that were like, oh my God, I can't believe this was a thing. Or was it just all kind of melded together into one big ball of fail? I don't remember what happened this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I, I would say Equifax is probably. I mean, from a security yeah. perspective, you know, that that was probably like the uh, the big, Lots of the stuff big like a pun gorilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Facebook is uh, self-immolating. I think mm-hmm. that's the right the right term. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> was uh, was but, Equifax the death of whatever last vestiges of privacy we might have had? Because everything's arguably out there already now. Yeah, you know, uh, so so that's an interesting thing that I've actually been thinking about. Like, at, at what point do we cross a threshold where, you know, the incremental harm that could come from someone else having your data is just really not that significant? Yeah. And and I, I suppose that it's kind of a dumb question because, you know, you, it, it – just because one one entity steals your data doesn't mean that every entity that might want it has it. So, mm. um, you know, I, we, I, or we'll use it. Or oh yeah, correct. In any way, 
Right. And was the you know the 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 internet's been awash with personal data for Forever. years. So there's right. more of it out there now. Right. And there's probably more than can feasibly be used. Right. Mm. I mean, there's all that you can only commit fraud at a at at a certain rate. So, so I, I suspect I suspect they're not really wanting for um, for personal data to commit to commit fraud. It's um, yeah. You know, it it seems to me well, like I think they're probably being. Yeah, they're ahead. being selective with whose data they're committing fraud with. Fraud with. Well, exactly. My, exactly. You, you target me, you're not going to get a lot of money out of me, believe me. You target somebody who is a publicly known figure, um, right. who you know has money, you're going to get money out of them. So I think that it's not just casting a wide net. It's once you have uh, the fish in a net, you start looking for the big fish and releasing the smaller fish back into the ocean. Um, exactly. So I think the regular person probably has less of a risk of having this done, um, but I could be wrong. Hmm. Um, Was, didn't the Equifax thing you could also just be. It, yeah, it did, but the, uh, but all of the gory details okay. came out this year. Cause I was, I was looking, uh, as soon as it dropped, like tanks tanked, I bought a bunch of stock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is a really good time to be in a stock market. And no, I was just looking. Like, did something else with Equifax just recently happen? Because my stocks were doing fantastic, and now I'm at a loss. Mm, they're on uh, sale. We're, no, we're having the year-end holiday sale. It's a it fire is, sale. Yep. It is at it's a 90, full-on fire sale. They're at $91 a share. Yep. Looks Whereas, like, like oh, yeah. if you see, two months ago, they were at all your stocks. All your stocks are probably in the same boat. No, Tesla's doing fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you have one share? The S&P 500, I believe, is down more this year than it was in 2018. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it's that not going to be a good end of the year for the... Well, yeah. we have to give them advice on something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Might actually be good advice. I've got some penny stocks. <laughs> Buy low, can... sell high. Thank yes. you, thank you, everyone. I got no, some... I, 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 I don't know if we talked about this on a podcast or not, but like my, my investing strategy with stocks is I wait until somebody's breached, and then I buy their stocks. <laughs> and then I wait. Crisis. It's a good strategy, actually, but I don't like to play single stocks. I just do with like play money. It, I mean, it's real money, but it's just not a lot. Yeah. Oh, wow. I wish I had play money. You printing it in the basement again? I got some of that the other day in the mail, and it's great because it has all these Chinese characters on it. They're wow. like these hunt crisp mm -hmm. $100 bills she's that my kids were playing with. got that big podcast money. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm making this, all this money big, we make off of podcasting. She's got the book money coming in. Oh, right. Yeah. I have fat, all these side hustles. Oh, yeah. Right. The book money. Money. She's got right. fat stacks of, you know, the, uh, the Berlin cash. Empire is. Uh, yes. That's right. Yep. That's right. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Amanda Berlin Solutions Incorporated. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is anybody surprised at the number or severity of vulnerabilities that we've had this year? That have, have, uh -uh. You know, <laughs> sorry, no, I'm like surprised after, there weren't more. What 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 do you think? Like, start at the landslide. Was it like uh, like TLS or something? Yeah. You know, once once somebody figured out like all these gigantic pieces of software that are like foundational, having all these issues, it just no. like landslide from there. So, so my, you know, uh, Apache kind of, struts too. Yeah, Pat. Yeah, Apache struts was um, that kind of goes back to Equifax, but Apache struts has been like the the soccer ball for a while. But you know, if you if you kind of think back to the beginning of the year, we started 2018 with Meltdown Inspector. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And that like right out of the right out of the shoot, and you, you know, if you look around, just an observation, and I and I suspect this may have a lot to do with it. There's I, what I would perceive a um, a really significant entrance or or, or migration towards um, kind of bug hunting, right? Right. You know, the, and 
and that I think is is manifesting itself in a bunch of different ways. You know, you have all the security companies trying to to, to jockey for a pole position and trying to get their name out there, but then you also have, you know, companies like Bug Crowd and and others. Um, you know, it plus plus everybody's getting pen tests. You know, it, every damn regulatory regime now requires pen tests. So, I, I just think there's a whole lot of it, kind of an unprecedented amount of people looking for bugs these days for a, for a whole variety of different reasons: self promotion, um, money, you know, whatever. So, I think that's got a lot to do with it. And I and by the way, I. I really think that every time we find some new cool thing like Meltdown Inspector, I mean, look, we're on like what the fifth iteration of, of uh, you know, of, of, of those bugs now, yep. yeah. you know, yep. and I, I, you know, that's going to be fertile ground for drilling for, for a long time. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, I think every time something like that comes up, you know, it, it spawns new thoughts like holy crap what a you know nobody thought about going and looking at you know how you how the sound card works yeah right work. right <laughs> yep <laughs> <clears throat> what got me i think this year for myself was um you know we did actually a couple of episodes that i didn't realize about uh, software supply chain stuff i mean we did the the node.js stuff just recently with the um you know the the npm director of security shortly after the whole flat map uh issue but we also talked about another npm issue where um the package manager back in february of of this year um when you install it on a system it actually broke permissions for files like etsy and user and all these things and um you know Plug-in dependency hell. I mean, if I used to think, oh, you know, the SANS top 20, just know what software is in your environment, what hardware is in your environment and everything. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not possible anymore. You can't <laughs> follow and manage that stuff. It's, you know, it's a pipe dream. These CIS top 20 things are like, oh, yeah, you know, you just do this. And it looks so easy on paper with that couple sentences there. Well, if you're really, that's the great really, thing about being a if consultant. You're a, if you're a medium or small organization, <laughs> it's easy to do. But for everyone else, it isn't. I would argue yeah, that it's not even that easy. I don't think so. Not even a small and medium sized businesses. If you're using Node, you've got a thousand dependencies on. Yeah, anything. that's the that's the thing. I I uh, I, I run a um, Mastodon instance, which which has a Node which, which partially uses Node JS. Whenever JS and whenever you uh, whenever you do an update, like it pulls in like three thousand yep. components. Do I don't you, think. Do you read and research all of those? No, right. no, nobody does, and There's nobody no is. Way. <laughs> yeah. There's no way. I just and, want and my that's, I think that's the problem. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think I, I, I could see a lot more happening with that now. But it's open source, and of course, many mm-hmm. eyes. You know, everybody's everybody's watch, looking at it. Yeah. Everybody's watching it. Right? Yeah. I you know I I feel bad about you know the the stuff that Adam uh, Baldwin and them have over there at the NPM team because he said he has four people and himself looking at like nine hundred thousand packages, and I'm like how do you, you can't even, you can't even begin to fathom how much nine hundred thousand packages is, you can't look at those, not right. to mention code quality, you can't. you can't, yeah, it's just it's ugly it's really ugly, um. <clears throat> Wow. All right. So, um, let me see. Bitcoin ransomware. I laugh at that because that's funny because nothing of real value was lost. And I was trying to, <laughs> I looked up a lot like, of people. How many, how many years out. is 900,000 days? Like, if you just take a day to look at each one, that's yeah. like 3,000 years. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> But he has five people, so divide thirty by thirty years by five. So it's only going to take six years well, to go through. That's what he's billing, right? Right. That's the billables. You know, yeah. it's not actually what they do. Yeah. Um, so the the Bitcoin thing, the the whole uh, bomb threat deal dealio was it last Friday? Yeah. Where, where they were sending the the messages to. Schools, universities, hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. That freaked a lot of people out, to say the least. Did you get hit by that? Um, uh, not me personally, no. No, I meant like your your university. Yes, we they, did. Oh, wow. Um, and then I'm on the infra guard. I'm on the 
I'm a member of IFGAR and I'm board of directors. So our members were freaking out um, to the point where it, the FBI is like, just call this number or go report it at this website. Um, we are aware of what's going on. <laughs> so, you know, it's just another bit of commerce bit uh, coin scammers yeah. tactic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I wonder how many people actually paid their answer. Has InfraGuard gotten better? Someone has. Yes, I think our InfraGuard's cool. Well, I, I was just saying because the the InfraGuard I used to to be in in Austin, they uh, um, the emails were overly vague, uh, didn't really have any information, and came out three weeks after everything was already done. So it was like, oh, patch all your systems against X, and we're like, well, yeah, we we did that three oh, weeks shit. ago, buddy. Well, I I, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, um, for that sort of thing, probably hasn't gotten any better for information sharing and the ability to uh, attract interesting speakers about good topics. We just had a briefing from a company that does ta- counterintelligence consulting. That was really interesting. Um, I think that that's useful. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I think we have now like three members of the three or four geeks board on the West Virginia uh, InfraGuard Alliance board. So, Cool. We're taking over. Okay. We're going to make it uh, party central. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, so I, I think it really depends on your chapter. And I think the Pittsburgh chapter, which is sort of our sister chapter, is very involved. Uh, they do the the um, the Three Rivers uh, InfoSec Symposium thing that Amanda talked at. They, oh, okay. They're really big into that. And they always come – to HackerCon, Secure WV, and at Aid uh, this year. So, um, okay. yeah, they've been very, very good. Yeah. <clears throat> so, speaking of information sharing, we've we've at least BreakSec we've covered several organizations over the years. Uh, retail ISACs. Um, the NPM guy talked about an ISAC that he has. Um, Jerry, I'm sure your company's you know a member of some. Um, a few. How how hard is it to do you share any information with those organizations and how do you like de-anonymize it or how do you, how do you format it so that it's, it's still useful, but you know, not giving your competitors a leg up. Christ. That's a, that is a, I I think that's a really, really significant problem for, for a lot of companies. Yeah. You know, because, um, and I think the larger the company, the, the more, um, the more of a concern, you have right because it, it just becomes increasingly difficult and and you know the desire to want to um expose the brand you know to the potential downsides i mean because you know w- when you think about it the sharing outward doesn't um you know as a, as a singular instance doesn't really benefit you right, right. you know you benefit from the ecosystem that you're contributing to over the long term, and and so I think that a lot of companies have a have have a lot of a lot of consternation about that. And you know, this is one this is one area where I think the you know I, I I'm not a I don't think the industry does a very good job of of uh, of managing this. I mean, I think there there could be much better ways to share information in a in a way that um, fosters participation from you know from companies and I, I don't know I, I guess I'm not smart enough to know how that would work what would have to be done to make that work well but I just tell you that it's not it doesn't work today oh but, but before we continue uh, the theories and opinions expressed by everybody on the show right now um, past present and future uh, are not the points of view of our respective employers, past, present, and future. <laughs> That's that is very true. That's because I listened to Defensive That's, Sec, and you know, Jerry Jerry says that, and I, I forgot just, to I mention just, that uh, at the beginning of the show. So was I was crossing my fingers while you were reading that. What? So that you're in academia, you're you're fine. <laughs> you don't it doesn't you don't really you don't really matter. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Your, your your tenure track is just whatever ass you can kiss. So you know that kind oh, of thing. Oh, I was going to invite you to come to aid, Mister Brick, but uh, I don't know. 
I, I am. Well, I, I don't want to have to fly crop duster to get into the airport there, so. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we can fly into Detroit. Our planes, we, can, we can carpool. Ooh. Our planes have two engines at our airport. Props. No. You will yeah, you will well, love driving I mean, through the middle of nowhere, Ohio, on the way to West Virginia. This is me the, shaking my head. Bill, no. The billboards you see and the houses you see oh are amazing. Hell. I can only imagine it probably looks like East Texas or East Washington State here. So you just don't want to. You just don't want to try my shower. That's what it is. Uh, as as long <laughs> as I'm the only one in it, I'll give it a try. But I've uh, heard it's amazing. I hate for, I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'm not going to explain it on the podcast. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I'm. It's okay as long as people don't start breaking into my house and taking showers. Oh wow! Yeah, um, yeah, that, that's awkward. Yeah, right. so about that. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm just here for entertainment. I bring nothing to this podcast. You, my own podcast is such a shit show. I have to show up over here and make this a shit show too. So that's okay. You you uh, have a fine podcast, sir. It's mostly me just. <laughs> hacking on people but anyway that's all right we actually we actually did a podcast recently i'd like to point out we did do episode number something or other yeah Yeah, Uh, and and at the last conference i was at we i actually had somebody say it was a good podcast well so they listened to it oh i know them they drink a lot so it doesn't surprise me amanda that was the uh that was the one you were at with the election we did the election security one a uh, bit right yeah. yeah that was actually really interesting i'm i'm glad uh i'm glad we were able to get somebody at least from the state of ohio i i was um, oh yeah it, it is cutting out huh okay every now and then sorry yeah i'll see your lips moving and nothing's happening oh great okay that's okay. what she said oh my <laughs> There's our explicit tag. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I was said shit earlier. I was surprised that um, you know the 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 talk we gave on election security uh, was was as popular as it was because um, I didn't know what to expect and it was very non political. So it was it was nice to to have a uh, talk about the policies and processes involved. Um, yep. I, I'm wondering if we could find some other people from other states to to at, you know find out how they do election security good so. luck why is that i'd like to point out you might look at what west virginia is doing west virginia is now doing mobile voting for military members overseas using the blockchain to secure it oh no what yeah what mm-hmm. the blockchain mm-hmm. we're blockchain saved save the us. blockchain Yay. i know like a blockchain expert we can get on yeah so that, it's, that's kind of interesting um uh, is he driving around in his like, Lambo going hold 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 hold? Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh the blockchain of uh, the whole blockchain security is being done by a startup. Um, Weird. Which uh fancy. Uh, yeah, isn't that startup, great? Because you know startups do such a good job of being experts in their field. Well they're mm-hmm. usually very secure. Right? Oh, yes. very secure mm-hmm. and well vetted. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Security is number one uh, priority in their in their you know stuff. Correct, just like safety. Yeah. Yep, yeah, safety is number one. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting if you can find those. Uh, there's a bunch of articles out there. Um, a lot of the guard, West Virginia guards involved somehow too. Um, okay, I trust those guys, so I don't know. I just they they won't give me a peek. The, behind the, the curtain the mobile cool. voting thing sounds interesting I, I actually have a friend of mine she's uh her name's Jean, and and she's uh, uh doing research on using blockchain for like secure ledger and um like bookkeeping and you know online record storing and stuff like that for uh, yeah. integrity purposes which you know that, yeah. that's that's fair you know that that that's a, a valid method by which to use you know the blockchain for integrity purposes yep some people have, have recommended using the blockchain for those purposes when it comes to things like um, land transfers, for example. Mm, yeah. So that you have the, contracts. Yeah. the deeds and the contracts and everything, but you also have blockchain, uh, blockchain distributed blockchain ledger. ledger. I'm sorry. I should not mm-hmm. take a lot of drugs to try to podcast. <laughs> <It's okay>. um, <laughs> it's like I'm saying words and they're coming out of my mouth, but they're melting. <laughs> Like soft chocolate. Oh my god! 
Makes it even better. Don't, if he runs for president, I've got so much good audio right here. So, <laughs> like, really, like, you think that'll matter in this day and age? No, I think you it, would. It's actually, it. yeah, it's actually a feature now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what, grab that's them by the blockchain. <laughs> we, we had our own uh, drama, election drama here in the in uh, Georgia. Oh, really? yeah. oh yeah, I saw yeah. that. We, uh, you know, the the the. Uh, um, the person who ended up being elected governor was the former secretary of state who runs the elections here in Georgia. And he accused that, that he's a Republican and re- accused the Democrats of hacking, <laughs> yes. quote, hacking the election because uh, the uh, apparently he some, lost. <laughs> well, no, he won actually. He, oh, he did. Okay. I'm sorry. He, 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 he won. Um, so uh, actually today they, Today they came out and said, "Well, there's actually no evidence that the Democrats had the election." So, um, th- this, by the way, it seems seemed to me, at, at least at the time, to be one of those situations where uh, um, a security researcher kind of stumbled onto something and raised awareness, and, and then suddenly that became an accusation of hacking. So, that, you know, I, well, I we have that- this ongoing narrative about you know election hacking, election hacking. We say election hacking when we refer to uh, the Russian interference in our election. Was that really a hack? No, it was using a lot of memes to really confuse us. Um, right. and, you, know, you know, what's technical and what's informational warfare gets muddied. Mm. And so yeah. I think people are trying to play a political point. Um, have now are like, oh, well, wow, I was hacked. Yeah. Because so- it's convenient and, and sort of falls into that that narrative, uh, even though it may be a false narrative. Yeah. So I have a question, uh, with the security researcher that reported it, could it have been handled better? Did the person that found the vulnerability just not understand the whole political landscape and implications of it? Uh, could it have been handled in a, in a much better way? Like talking to the media versus trying to report it to the secretary of state's office, you know, I'm going to I'm going to guess yes I, I but I but I will say I I don't know and I I just don't know enough about the case to you know, to, to say one way or another but I will say that um, you know the state of Georgia has had a had kind of a, a number of years where we've we, we've had similar problems like this and and um, and this is not a not a new <laughs> A new development for for Georgia. Um, we we had a, a an incident a couple of years ago, um, not entirely dissimilar. And and I think at the time the uh, the systems that were involved were actually wiped in uh, under under kind of suspicious circumstances, as I recall. So, mm. um, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I I I. I, I I, I have to imagine that there is a, a probably a better way, but you know, it, I, I think that to be perfectly honest, anytime you're you're dealing with something political like that, especially now, yep. it's it's probably a foregone conclusion that someone's going to co-opt your message, and uh-huh. it, you know, you're gonna you're gonna lose the ability to control. I mean, so even if you go into it with the 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 most, you know, the best plan. It's it's going to get twisted and contorted in ways that you um, you, you really didn't intend. So yep. oh, yeah. you know, just just um, <laughs> for, for those of you out there who are you know who are playing in that space, you know, just just be aware of that. And and it's um you know it's kind of an ugly ugly minefield right now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and and I would also say, by the way, I don't know if th- this is just my view. The government, especially, but the, I think the layperson too is 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 kind of taken a view that hacking is almost like modern day witchcraft. It's, yeah. it's just it's not understood, and so it seems magical and scary. And so you know we we levy criminal penalties that are um, you know kind of commensurate with our level of of uncertainty and and and, and fear. Um, and, and I think it drives us to do irrational things, you know, yep. so we, we, we look at well, people who, who do that and we don't I mean, in the 
I mean, I think that's always been an issue dating back to the 90s. Um, sure. But we, I think we also have the issue now where mo- so many people, so many people on the street, pe- you know, normal, everyday people are affected by breaches, are mm-hmm. affected by nation state hackers, and they feel helpless. Yep. And, you know, who's supposed to run to their rescue uh, or, or aid, you know? No, it's, a, it's uh, a great point. We live in a we live in a, a society where companies are in, in charge of their own security. Uh, you know, do we nationalize security? That's a really bad idea. But I think that's that's an ongoing um, it's an ongoing issue. This this continued feeling of insecurity. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting dichotomy because on the one hand, I think you're absolutely right, but on the other hand, I have to wonder. You know what? how how much harm has the average person who has been affected by Equifax or Anthem or, you know, Home Depot or Target or the OPM, you know, ha, ha, to what extent have they actually suffered harm? And I'm not trying to minimize it, but I'm... Yeah, probably you know, not directly from those, not, probably not directly, but indirectly. Right. Uh, I notice, at least in my own circle of friends and also in academia that phishing attacks are way up mm, yeah. and they're leveraging things that a normal attacker wouldn't know. And I think that that may be, I was going to make this point o- earlier, you know, you might be well fished. You might, uh, it's a great point. That data. You might be targeted because you've got a lot of money or you might just be going down a list or going down, uh, to a dump of, of data that's been breached and then using that to build phishing campaigns. But, you know, if you want to talk about people who have been fished lately, I get fished three or four times a day. We have people that get fished university. We have, I have coworkers who's, who fought, whose father and mothers have had issues with things like um, their, your Amazon account has been breached. Log in here. I mean, simple phishing stuff, but realistic, that they're falling for it. My mother felt felt prey to a scam. I have a I have a student whose mother actually felt for a scam. Actually sent thousands of dollars by UPS oh. Oh. to to a uh, PO box someplace. She was able. My student was able to uh, get most of the money back. But um, and these people are not stupid. And I think a lot of it's generational. Yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. You know, the IRS contacts you, it's the IRS, you need to do something about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or if they're using, um, you know, I, I keep getting email from Amanda Berlin saying that uh, she needs to send me $500 in Target cards. <laughs> and I, I trust Amanda Berlin. Not, I mean, it's a stupid example, but they're getting email from people with, who they trust. Yep. So I don't know that they're directly affected by these breaches, but I think that some criminals are leveraging these breaches. And I don't have fat, you know, other than my own uh, experiential uh, experience to back any of this up. But I, I think that maybe those breaches have led to something a little bit bigger. And it'd be interesting to see, um, you know, um, look at Internet crime, IC3 uh, reports as they come out this year, next year to see how much got reported to the FBI. Because yep. I send everybody there now. It's like if you we don't know about, we can't count it. Didn't happen, and you might not get your money back. But we need to know about it. Mm-hmm. IC three's Internet Crime Complaint Center. Yeah, link in the show notes. The Internet Crime Complaint Center. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I think we've uh, you know we've we you know done our you know due diligence here for like the final year in podcast. Um, is anybody have any other thoughts or, you know, talk about your podcasts a little bit specifically, uh, you know, we're tell supposed us, tell- to go around and say like something big, we accomplished or something, right? Like so this an inspirational end of the year, right? Or no, are, are we just setting you up for something here to go ahead? No, talk- no, that's what we did last time. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, let's, let's, let's save the best for last. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bell, uh, what, what did you do this year? That was interesting. <laughs> that, that's- <laughs> so, 
So I, I, I have, I mean, it's, it's kind of timely. I, um, I, I had, I had a kind of a life changing thing happen last weekend. Um, oh. a, 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 one of my employees lives in Panama city beach. Okay. And, and, uh, as you may know, that area was hit by hurricane Michael about two months ago. Yep. And, um, and so she, you know, she's fortunately she lived in a, in a part of town that, wasn't really impacted, but um, she she asked me to come down and uh, and help. So so my wife, um, primarily my wife, but to some extent me, uh, collected all sorts of uh, of gifts and, and whatnot to um, to give to people who's who basically lost everything, mm. like families who lost everything. And uh, we we ended up helping about twenty four my wife and I and, and and some of my coworkers and some of our, our family friends ended up helping about 24 kids across, I think 10 families or 12 families. And um, it was, uh, and we got to actually go around and, and you know, drive around and deliver these things, th- these, these gifts. It was, um, it was really incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I, I don't even know how to explain it. The, the, just, the damage alone was um, kind of surreal, you know, like 60 in Panama city, I would say about 60% of the commercial buildings were completely demolished. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of the, uh, Hey, I don't know what the percentages of, of, of houses were, but tons and tons of damage. And unfortunately a lot of the places, that seemed to, at least to me to be worst hit were, were kind of low income. Mm. Um, and, you know, and so it was just really, um, it, it, it kind of really hit home that, you know, like I, I complain about, you know, work and, and whatnot. And, and then I go and I, you know, I, I literally had it helped the family out. The only thing they wanted for Christmas was charcoal and lighter fluid Wow! because they, they couldn't, you know, <laughs> They couldn't afford to, you know, to, to heat stuff up to cook, and yeah. and, and it, you know, we ended up, we got them a heck of a lot more than charcoal and lighter <laughs> fluid. But um, it was it was just, you know, kind of. Not, this is obviously not infosec, but just kind of top of my mind. So, I, I uh, it was a great experience. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good for you, man. Yeah, I've I've never gotten a chance to do that. I think it would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah and you know, look. It, this is uh you know this is the 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 season of of giving i guess right so mm-hmm. if you haven't done that and you're listening it's still time yep oh yeah go be nice it doesn't take much to make a difference yep. Uh, yep that's right that's what i learned yep bill how about you i got a new knee oh yeah <laughs> seriously how the hell did i follow that sorry <laughs> you're fine well, i couldn't have really had jerry the last <laughs> No, I honestly, I, I, you know, I know it just happened, but I feel like a thousand times better. Yeah. You know, it's not just a medicine, and I'm very happy that uh, hopefully uh, I will be able to go to conferences and be able to walk around without feeling like I'm going to die. Oh, that's, that's cool! Awesome. Um, so, and I can't wait to get the other one done. The other one done. Uh, what else was I accomplished? Uh, I didn't die, and I didn't kill any of my students. So, those are probably three accomplishments for this year. Three, you, yeah, those are three big. Did some of them need killing? Is is that what you're trying to say or No, oh, gosh. Oh, okay. Just frustrating sometimes. Yeah. At least, you know, I used to have to fire people at my old job. Yeah. Now I have to fail them and uh, it's a little less of a blow, but mm. <laughs> still like less satisfying. <laughs> no, I hate to fire people. <laughs> There's a difference between giving someone an F and telling them that, oh, by the way, no more paycheck for you. So, yeah, yeah. right. It's not um, the end of the world. <clears throat> right on. Um, well, I mean, I, you know, I, I took a pay cut to retool uh, as, a, as a PM, uh, you know. Yeah, but that's like a big. That's a big jump. Yeah. 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 I always yeah. enjoyed being a P- PM. 
Well, I, I realized that I was never going to be, you know, where I, where I was at my current job, I was stuck. Um, not even if somebody died, I'd be able to move laterally. So I left the, the job that I was at. And, you know, for the, for, I don't know, for about two and a half years, and I didn't, I didn't tell them this on the way out. Um, if they listen, you know, I apologize. But <laughs> for like the last two years, it felt like oh um, they were going to find out that I, you know, I wasn't. It, it's not that I wasn't useful, but if I felt like I wasn't doing anything of use to them and they would find that out one day and realize they didn't need me. So I realized that I was doing, I'd done blue team for about 17 years and I was still the, the low man on the totem pole, the bottom rung. And I was like, well, I need to, you know, I'm, I'm almost, I'll be 40 next year for God's sake. You know, three quarters of my life is over with right now. So um, I needed to move up in my career. Or I was going to be, you know, some, you're young person for the rest of my life so i hope it's only half of your life because that's you don't want to die at 60 it's close to three quarters <laughs> the way the way my family goes but you know i wanted to get where you're jerry young. was and that way i figured eyes older than you, you know. yeah jerry jerry's you know he's turning you know 35 next year and i thought well i'm not even anywhere near close to where he is so. yeah yeah we have jerry and i have the same birthday yeah i hate you all <laughs> I, 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 Bill, I'm a little older than that. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Uh, you what, like 44? Well, we, Jerry, we have a son the same age, right? I, I think so. I got one in college and one driving. Your youngest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your youngest yeah. is the same age as my oldest. I think so. And and yeah. Bill's been collecting Social Security checks for about 15 years now. So. I know. And one oh. of these days they're going to catch on. <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, you know, so it's uh, I'm I'm probably I don't know. I always say that I'm probably the oldest. Uh, I just turned fifty five. Oh wow! But my knee's only a week old. Oh, Th- there's that. You gonna have a birthday yeah. for your knee every year? You know, here's the thing about my life, and this is something I should point out too. I actually entered a PhD program and have not failed out yet. Nice. But by the time I graduate, I'll be over 60 years old. So I'm like, should I just go ahead and retire? Like get my PhD, get my cap and gown, my hood, and just like mic drop. <laughs> Screw you all. <laughs> yes. I'm out of here. Uh, you are. I'm going to go home. You know, but you'll... <laughs> Who's going to pay really your good. student debt off when you pass away? Because like doctorals is like expensive, ain't it? Not when you work. Uh, well, not when you work at the university. It's like oh, basically that's free. How you do it. Okay. I have to pay student fees, which pisses me off <laughs> because I'm paying for like things that I never use. Although I might use the rec after I get my my knee all rehabbed. That's right. Yeah. You can sit in a hot tub. You have to go early in the morning because people do things in that hot tub anyway. Um, you know, it is a college campus. Yeah, never um, use the hot tub in a college. Not, always, if you're going to go, go very early in the morning. They still don't clean it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they do. <laughs> two of my guys, uh, hey. two of my guys work at the rec. They let me know when it's when it's uh, either red flag or green flag. <laughs> So if there's a red flag, don't, the two don't red open the flags. door. It, yeah. Two red flags. <laughs> Black flag. I just shut it all down. <laughs> Black flag wrong. conditions in the, in the swim pool. Um, yeah. Or brown flag. There's a brown flag for the swim Ooh. pool. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. I don't even want to know. Like sometimes I'm seriously like, yeah, we had to shut down the pool for a while. And I'm like, okay, I don't oh, want to know. No. Yep. Nope. nope. Also, these study tents in the library, you can't tell me that people didn't make out in the study tents. What's a study tent? Why, I mean, I don't understand why else you would have a study tent. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be so them. you could go, the, the universities put them up so people could go chill out. I'm like, people are going to make out in a study tent. You can't <laughs> tell me that that's not what's happening there. I that's did, all I would do. I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, you know. How do you think you got to these kids today? I thought it was you the back. You got to make them cookies and you got to give them milk. You got to have a Chevy pickup, not a tent. Uh-oh. And you have, to have, you have to have a rec, the best rec center in the nation. <laughs> Bill's, 
Bill, do you got you got an onion in your belt? As is the the fashion at the time. You yelling at clouds over there. Is that what it is? Old man yells at clouds. I'm yeah. sitting here with my cane, tapping it on the floor. That's right. Blair needs to bring my medicine. Where's my medicine? Oh my, oh my hell. god. Oh my hell. And we're done. <laughs> yep. So last but not least, Miss Berlin, uh, what did you do this year that was of note? Not a lot. <laughs> You did a year-end podcast. I've done hey. it. Yes, that's hey. That. You were the podcast. keynote at a number of different. Um, I keynoted a lot of places. Like it seems like you get on a list once you keynote <clears throat> one place. They're like, "Holy we, shit, she keynotes!" And then actually, like, we couldn't find anybody else. Oh, yeah, wow. I, I got I get <laughs> wow. that from a lot of people. <laughs> like we've used everybody else that talks on stage. How about you? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, all all the stuff that I've already been like talking like crazy about, all the mental health hacker stuff. Very cool. Yeah, that's been very cool. going very well. Cool. So, so that's far. a big accomplishment for you, by the it way. So, and congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can't just, wait until it's like officially a five hundred one c three because then we can actually do more. Oh, I thought you were already there. I'm, okay. No, we're incorporated as a nonprofit. No, Never mind. As long as you're operating as a nonprofit, the IRS designation. We, we yeah. are operating as a nonprofit. You're uh, good. We have two years to yeah, get your official thing. Uh, the lawyer said you, we could do it. So, <laughs> actually, if you have any problems with that, let me or Matt Perry know. Yeah. We've done a lot of nonprofit stuff between yeah. three or four geeks and aid and everything else. Yep. Wow. Nice. And we're not lawyers, although we play one on TV. Yep. <clears throat> I'm a decent lawyer, so we'll see. He was nice enough to join our last board meeting, so nice. Okay, all right. Well, let's let's finish this up, Jerry. Uh, tell us uh, where people can listen to you on the reg. DefensiveSecurity.org. Be there, or be square. Yep, and it's at DefensiveSec on Twitter. Correct, and you're and at InfoSec.exchange on Mastodon. Oh, fancy. I'll have to get on that Mastodon at some point. I, yeah. I was on Mastodon once, like 10 different places, and then it was just too much, so I left. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why people make so many damn accounts, but hey, you do you. I just giggled like a five-year-old when I heard about toots, so I didn't understand. <laughs> not my favorite that's word. what a mastodon yeah. is you toot you instead of a tweet. tweet it's a toot yes oh right yeah I, yeah yeah you know toot, beans toot. beans the magical fruit the more you eat the more you toot anyway um <clears throat> bill, thanks bill uh bill, yes. bill, yes. bill, bill, bill. yeah where do, I, where, do, where I, can I, people I listen do. to you and you know your wonderful musings you dm uh, me i'll give you his address oh <laughs> You cannot shower in my house without my permission. <clears throat> That's good to know. So hey. actually reboot at podcast.com is no longer there. Oh, but we are still on iTunes. We're on audio boom. We're okay. uh, audio boom.com channels nine. I'm sorry. Four, nine, one. Here. I hope I'll just copy and paste it in the pod. That's in the a notes. good idea. And That's you're on YouTube. Cool. YouTube audio, audio yeah. boom. Record on that? YouTube. We record on YouTube. I'll send you everything audio uh, boom. here on the because oh. apparently whenever you take medication, you can't read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought it was just that's very true. Being West Virginia, that's why you're read. not in pain because you're still on the good stuff. Actually, I'll be honest with you, I have not taken but two pain pills today. That's good. <gasps> Don't, I was on this stuff take for like three weeks. Yeah. And it's wonderful because I've been able to poop for the first time in a few oh days. Oh, my God. <laughs> what are we uh, so, on look, as you get older, that's an important thing. Come well, on. When you Lay take, off. When you take off. high powered main pain medicine, yes, it's fun. You're time. right. It's, yeah, narcotics just, it's terrible for yep. everything inside. Yep. <laughs> So I've been lucky. I've been able to have to take one of them. It, this has been the Bodily Function Podcast. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow when I tell you about my circumcision <laughs> at age 14. That's, oh, has, right. has, oh, God. Has anybody ever read like the, um, <clears throat> what is it, uh, for uh, Cards Against Humanity? That's how you get to pick who goes first. Who? Yeah, who went poo last. Who pooped last, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> my favorite part. It's genius. <laughs> Great. That's your favorite part? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, Bill, you're going to put the, the link to your podcast in show notes. I just did. Apparently, you can see it. Oh, now. there it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. There it is. Wow, Damn that's it. that's weird. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> RSS feed, audioboom.com, channels. Wow. Don't yeah. even know what audio boom is. Yeah, just looks look at the show notes. It's a long thing. Yeah, it's, it's also uh, the link to iTunes. And I've been finding the podcast in just weird places. Like people have been collecting them. Yeah. And uh, sending them out. So Okay. Right on. <clears throat> so, um, Ms. Berlin, uh, tell people how they'd find you. <laughs> So one of my 10 Twitter accounts, <laughs> oh, right. uh, uh, InfoSister, I-N-F-O-S-Y-S-T-I-R. And then for the mental health hackers, we have at Hackers Health. Yeah, nice. At Hackers Health. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, uh, uh, it's at Lurg and at Malicious Link for the defense security folks over there. So, Ooh. yeah, you can you can be hook, hook, hook up uh, with Jerry and Andy uh, specifically. So, um, so. Uh, one of the other things I'm proud about, uh, you know, in, in, in addition to the podcast where you can find us on Twitter at BreakSec is our uh, hugely uh, successful Slack. Um, we have uh, I, I just saw a pinned message in March when we welcomed our 1000th user. Uh, we actually have over 1600 now. Wow. Um, so we've, That's awesome. we've yeah, yeah um, we're very active on there. We have a lot going on. Ms. Berlin, uh, you know, coordinates her hacker secret Santa stuff through there, which uh, I got my stuff. That was pretty awesome. I got a where's Waldo book with Spock in it where I had to find Spock, which was awesome. <laughs> Um, we have a CTF club. We have a book club that's going on right now. We have it going on every other week. Um, tons of channels. We have our mental health uh, channel that Ms. Berlin is, is a big fan of, uh, CSEC East, which is my local Seattle meetup. So, I mean, we have a ton of channels on there for people of all, um, appetites on the InfoSec realm. So, uh, if you are interested in joining that, uh, you can, uh, hit us up on Twitter at BreakSec or hit bds.podcast at gmail.com and we'll get you an invite. And, uh, we have a social contract. We don't do politics we will ban we haven't banned anybody yet so you know maybe you're the lucky person i don't know um is that a challenge yes bill so, i'm like gonna challenge. ban you now so we don't have to yeah, worry about preemptive it. banning yeah he's actually a, a member of our slack bill is so yeah um he just doesn't come in there he might he might now that he's you know bed bedridden for now but um you can follow me uh on twitter at brian break b-r-y-a-n-b-r-a-k-e uh mr betcher who is uh usually here uh, except for during the holidays when he's got kids uh and he you know has priorities you can find him at betcher pwned b-o-e-t-t-c-h-e-r-p-w-n-e-d uh, we also launched the the Breaking Down Incident Response podcast this year, too. So Michael Goff, uh, Hacker Hurricane, is uh, one of the co-hosts over there on that with Mr. Betcher. And, uh, you know, they do the LogMD thing, which is going swimmingly. So you can find out everything on, um, about LogMD on malwarearchaeology.com. Uh, and, um, you know, I... You know, it, it's awesome that when Ms. Berlin or myself say, hey, let's get some podcasts together and do stuff, we have people who actually show up and care. Um, you know, Jerry and, and Bill and and all the other folks would have loved to have been here in, in spirit. But, you know, the holidays being what they are, I, you know, I'm not going to not gonna. I mean, we got that. a third of the people I invited. So yeah, that's awesome. It's not too so, bad. I, well, I missed the, the, the meetup at DerbyCon, so I'm making up for that. Well, we didn't there, really have there one. There wasn't one. Yeah, we oh, kind of really? had the pizza party with about 50 pizzas. And uh, we all sat around and then went to watch Hacker, Hacker uh, Who's Line or whatever. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting thing. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do DerbyCon next year with, you know, we had to order 50 freaking pizzas at, uh, well, we'll just have to invite certain individuals and we'll do it in my hotel room again. Oh yeah. Oh, wait a minute. We're talking about the podcast meetup, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We had a separate break sec meetup with like a yeah. hundred people yeah. and it was crazy. Uh, utter craziness. So it was awesome though. A lot of people, uh, uh, you know, made, made this, made this, you know, jackass with a microphone feel real special. So I appreciate everybody for the, for all that. So, um, any closing words, Jerry, Bill? Have a prop 
prosperous new year, everyone. I almost got that out without stuttering. Yeah. Happy holidays. Love you all. Uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Didn't anybody cover that yet? Happy Festivus. <laughs> yeah. Happy belated Hanukkah. There you go. Yes. Right on. Okay. Well, um, that was it uh, for this year, Breaking Down Security. We will be back, I don't know, in a couple of weeks. We're going to take the holidays off. I think it's probably going to be the week of... We're going to start our sixth year. Sixth. Um, probably the week of the 12th with a... I think we have an interview on the 12th, as a matter of fact. So that's awesome. Wow. So I was trying to think, have, have I been on it for two years now or just one? This will be the start of the and third year. Yeah. I okay, think that's what I thought. Yeah. Start of the third year. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you all are organized. You have like interviews and stuff. I just like message people and go, hey, you want to be on a podcast? And sometimes you just call them. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, He's like, hey guess what? You're on a podcast now. <laughs> oh, we're yeah. halfway is through. Is this, being, is this? Oh, man. Wow. Much guilt there. Wow. wow. Anyway. Wait, this was a podcast? Yes, yes exactly. it was. Surprisingly, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was it for uh, the Breaking Down Security Podcast and for the Defensive Security Podcast and the Rebooted Podcast. Uh, I'm Brian Brake with Jerry Bell, Bill Gardner, and Ms. Amanda Berlin. Have a great rest of your year. Have uh, uh, a good time. Please take care of yourselves because, as I've, I'm prone to say now after our hacker mental health, you're the only person you have, so take care of you. And be nice to one another, and uh, we'll talk to you again in the new year. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya.